Thank you, everybody. Um, let's continue our chapter three. Um, this one is going to be about where a bit of releases T load at both ends of the transmission line. So uh, for this one, um, we have our the source impedance, which is not equal to our Z zero or characteristic impedance. Before this, we're talking about our Z is or uh, the source impedance equal to our the characteristic impedance, and also our the load impedance is not equal to our characteristic impedance. Let's see here some change. There were for this case, your VF uh, is going to be your the voltage divider, right? So we have our ES uh, multiplied by uh, Z0 over ZS plus Z0. Okay, because there, you look at this one as the uh, Z0 in a series with uh, the source impedance. So this actually the voltage divider. And uh, for I, that's actually become a VF divided by Z0. So you end up with the ES over ZS plus Z0, according to equation 3.550 in my book. Well, this one is going to be your more complicated because you are, you have uh, the reflection both from the source and uh, from uh, the load end. Let's define uh, the reflection coefficient for the voltage and uh, represent by CV and the subscript V stand for the voltage. And uh, that's equal to, uh, I mean, uh, the reflection coefficients, that's the equal to VR or VI, or uh, the reflected voltage divided by uh, incident voltage. That's according to equation 3.54. And uh, as in the picture that I draw here, we have our uh, incoming you know, voltage VI, and you have a uh, you know, reflected voltage uh, VR. Also, you use subscript uh, I, that's represent uh, current, the same. Uh, reflection coefficient for the current is equal to IR over II. For the reflection coefficient at the load end, that's going to be your ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0. Um, the load impedance minus the characteristic impedance. And uh, at the source, that's going to be your ZS, that's the source impedance, minus the characteristic impedance divided by your the source impedance uh, plus the characteristic impedance. And uh, CI, that's going to be have an opposite uh, sign of uh, the reflection coefficient of the voltage. Okay, so we're going to use this a lot later on. Now uh, let's take a look at the load end. You're going to have the first reflection. That's the VR1 equal to. Uh, so let's say we go consider you know that going to be many uh, reflections, but this one let's take a look at the first reflection first. Uh, VR1 that's going to be equal to CVL VI right because you know CVL or uh, the reflection. Uh, coefficient at the load n um, equal to uh, VR1 over VI. That's the, going to be your 
the reflected voltage or reflected pulse. And uh, also a VI uh, incoming uh, signal or incoming uh, voltage, just uh, VF, simply VF. So uh, the total voltage at x equal to L, you're going to have an uh, incoming uh, voltage, which is the VF, plus reflected voltage at the load end, which is the VR1. So we have V1 equal to VR1 plus VF. You just plug in there VR1 equal to our CVL, VF plus VF. And you will end up with VF multiplied by 1 plus CVL. Okay, so that's very simple. Now uh, the second reflection is going to happen from the source when uh, you have uh, the reflected the voltage at the load end is coming to the source. And uh, VR2, that's represented by VR2, uh, equal to our CVS. You can see that you subscript S that's the represent the source, VI, and VI, simply VF. So you just work this out. V2 going to be equal to uh, VR2 plus V1. Let's take a look at this there carefully. V1 is the, we're talking about the second reflection. Okay, just ignore the, the source voltage we have at this point, because we consider only a reflected uh, voltage. So you have a reflected voltage coming uh, from the load end or the first reflection, you know, from the load uh, plus we are two because this one is going to uh, uh, reflect it back. So it's going to add up. Uh, that's we are two, and uh, we just uh, put the we are two as the equal equation C, CVS, CVL, VF plus V one. And V1, you just work out. This is your V1, we have uh, 1 plus uh, CVL. And uh, you end up with the uh, equation D. We have uh, VF 1 plus CVL plus CVL, CVS. And uh, finally, you're going to have uh, multiple deflections you know, from uh, both on the load and uh, from the source. And finally, you're going to have the step where voltage become uh, VSS equal to ES to ZL over ZL plus ZS. Okay, I, I'm gonna put a uh, no proof for this one and work this out later on. And let's see the plot, the time dependent voltage. Well, or you can see that there for the X, Axis, this is your TC over L, or you can say uh, one period, or the capital T uh, equal to uh, uh, L, or C over L, right? You can see here, uh, you end up with uh, the time. And uh, First, you're going to have an uh, incoming uh, the voltage from the source, which is the uh, you have EA, EAS, and then uh, that's going to uh, drop down because the this one uh, the voltage we will propagate uh, along the transmission line, which is the VF. And uh, you need to add up, you know, everything together from VF, you have a reflection from the load, you have a reflection from the source. To make this one clear, let's take a look. Reflection number one, this is the reflection from the load 
that's the CVL, right? And uh, you have total voltage become uh, one plus R one. And uh, the second reflection that duck from uh, the source. So you have a CVS, CVL, and this is your uh, second deflection. And this will continue, you know, until you have a stable voltage. Finally, that's the VSS, which is equal to ES, the ZL over ZL plus ZS. And also, this is the conclusion. You also use the approximate term in the term of exponential. This is the time dependent. V equal to VSS plus VF minus VSS exponential T over tau. And you keep in mind that uh, your tau is less than zero because the CVS the, and CVL are less than one. What is your tau? Tau is the time constant uh, equal to uh, KL. L is the, the length of uh, the transmission line. And C is the speed of uh, your signal along uh, the transmission line. And you know CVS, you know CVL. Well, uh, if you take a look at this one quick, at the time T0, uh, you're going to have what? You have a VSS minus VSS, right? So you end up with a VF. That's true. Because as T equal to zero, you only have a, a, the forward uh, voltage, you know, move along the line. Okay. And you will see your examples for more clear understanding. Now, uh, from our uh, 3.10, uh, let's take a look at the reflections from uh, discontinuities. Uh, you have a uh, ZL, uh, can be uh, not ZL, this one, but you can have a uh, uh, connect uh, R, C, and L. Uh, in series with uh, the source impedance uh, in this uh, picture is the use the z0 and uh, the length of the switch to uh, r c or l we uh, represent by uh, l1 which is the different uh, from L. That's mean uh, how far you know from uh, the switch to uh, the load end. But we will focus on L1. Yeah, well, same. We set up a uh, V in equal to V forward plus V backward. I mean uh, reflected voltage. And uh, V zero is the pulse. Uh, out from the resistor R and uh, V0 equal to uh, Z0 because the actual V0 is the VF plus VB, right? The forward voltage plus the backward voltage. So you just simply apply Ohm's law V equal to uh, ZI. And uh, also, the voltage drop across the R, simply R multiplied by the total current. Now take a look at the forward voltage. Um, this is just what the voltage divider. You have the source ES, the source voltage, and uh, you have uh, the source impedance Z0. And uh, at first, when you just close the switch, um, the voltage is not see your, 
you are, you see your L yet. It just have to see uh, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So you will have actually uh, just voltage divider become a ES multiplied by Z0 over Z0 plus Z0. In case uh, your source impedance equal to uh, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, that's end up with uh, ES over 2, or half of uh, your supply voltage. And uh, we be the backward voltage. Now, uh, when your voltage reach your resistor R that's going to reflect back, but uh, you can simply do uh, the same voltage divider. And uh, since you have VF, that's mean the incoming voltage or the forward voltage equal to ES over two. And uh, you have uh, the source voltage Z0 and the characteristic impedance of uh, Z0, okay? And this is your R. So you will be actually the voltage divider end up with uh, ES over two, uh, multiplied by R, divided by R plus two Z0, okay? Then uh, your V, you can do uh, VF plus VB. Okay, I'm gonna go through this one, but uh, this is uh, according to equals to uh, 3.6. You can work this one out. That's not uh, so difficult for you to do it. So uh, your V actually uh, become uh, the source voltage ES multiplied by R plus Z0 over R plus 2Z0. And this is the plot, as you can see. You have uh, the forward resistance, sorry, the forward voltage or coming uh, voltage ES over 2. And then uh, when it's hit, the resistor, uh, you're going to end up with uh, V equal to ES R plus Z0 over R plus uh, 2 Z0. Okay. So that's mean uh, uh, this is the total voltage when it's coming to uh, you know the resistor. Now let's take a look at the capacitor. You do the same thing, of course. We have equal to E S over two, and uh, now you're dealing with uh, the current because you know uh, okay let's just drop that for a moment you have our you can write IB in the term of our IF exponential negative T over Z0 C you know this this is the a charging equation for capacitor right and uh, Z0 C actually the time constant. And uh, so uh, your V equal to uh, VF minus IB because that's deflected back multiplied by Z0. And you just, uh, you know, plug in uh, your VF and your IB in Z0. Finally, you end up with the equation to uh, Six one. This is for capacitor, and uh, this is the voltage and time for cap capacitive load. Okay. You start from my incoming voltage Vf, which is equal to Es over two, and then it, the capacitor start charging up. You know, start from uh, the voltage zero until it, it reach uh, the final uh, the voltage, which is the ES over two. Or inductor. 
um, you know that the, of course you have VF. What about VB? VB, you know that the, for inductor, VB equal to L or TI by DT. And of course, IB equal to or IF exponential negative Z0, T over L. That's different from uh, the capacitor. You work this out. Plug in the IB, VB equal to or finally equal to negative ES over 2, exponential negative Z0, T over L. And your total current going to be uh, the forward current uh, minus the backward current. And you already have IF and you have IB. That's you end up with the equation H, this one. And this is the voltage and time for inductive load. So have a incoming voltage VF, which is the half of your source voltage. Okay, and then uh, it start uh, decreasing until it reach uh, VF, which is the ESO2, which is different than the uh, capacitor. Let's take a look at problem. Problem 3.21, with the mean of time constant tau for a transmission line with uh, Zs equal to Z0 over 3 and Zl, that's the load impedance, equal to 3,0, uh, three times of our characteristic impedance. Uh, for the length of the transmission line is 18 inch, and uh, 1 over C, C is the, the velocity of uh, the voltage along the transmission line. That's equal to uh, 2.5 nanosecond per feet. Well, you can pick up equation 3.58. Your tau equal to 2L over C, LN, CVS over CVL. CVL equal to uh, ZS minus Z0 divided by Zs plus Z0. Just plug the number, you end up with the CVS equal to a negative 1 over 2. Same as the CVL, you just plug the number because the, your ZL equal to a 3 times of a characteristic impedance of Z0. You end up with the CVL equal to a 1 over 2. For L equal to 18 inch, you need to convert to feet. That's equal to 1.5. You know, 1 inch equal to 0 by 0 83 feet. And then uh, finally, you have uh, your tau uh, equal to uh, negative 10 uh, by 4 nanosecond. It's always become a negative number because the CVS and CVL, you know, that's going to be. That's the have an opposite sign. Okay, so uh, this is your time constant. Problem 3.22 If the supply voltage ES equal to 5 volt is applied to uh, the line described in the exercise 3.21, find the voltage on the line as a function of time. Construct a voltage normalized time diagram similar to that presented in figure 3.16, what is guessed. Compare the voltage predicted by equation 3.57 with that shown in your diagram. Okay, since the, uh, the problem mentioned uh, equation 3.57, let me uh, take a look at equation uh, 3.57 equal to VSS plus the VF minus VSS exponential T over tau. From exercise 3.21, you have a CVL equal to 1 over 2, CVS equal to a negative 1 over 2. So you can work out for VF, that's equal to 3.75 according to equation 3.51. 
Okay, you just plug in because your z is equal to uh, z0 over 3. Now take a look at the first reflection at the load n. We have our vr1 equal to our cvl vf. That's equal to 1.875. So the total voltage at the load end, you have our incoming voltage vf plus the, the reflected voltage from the load end. You just add them together, you know, you have our uh, vr1 equals to our cvl vf and v plus vf. And you can say, you know, this is the uh, the backward voltage. This is the forward voltage. So you'll be one end up with uh, 5.6254. Second reflection. Now it's going to deflect it from the source. Um, I just pick up our equation D. You can look back at equation D. Um, your VF is equal to, is equal to uh, sorry, VF multiplied by 1 plus CVL plus CVL, CVS. That's end up with uh, 4.694. And finally, you have multiple reflections. At the end, you're going to have a stable voltage VSS according to equation of 3.56. Just plug in number, end up with uh, 4.54. And this is your plot. Okay. Um, you start from uh, ES and uh, the voltage, you know, starting dropping down until we reach uh, the stable voltage 4.54, which is the VSS as we do uh, some calculations. Why I picked up this one? Um, for uh, just the uh, multi no, multiple of a period of time. For one and three, that's mean uh, this is at the source end and this is at the load end. Okay, you can uh, <clears throat> take a look at this by yourself. So one, three, five, that's the source. And for even number, that's the load end. Now, according to equation 3.57, because the, the as you were to uh, compare the voltage predicted by uh, equation 3.57, so well, according to equation 3.57, um, you have VSS equal to 4.5 and VF equal to uh, 3.75. Um, you end up with uh, the voltage at any time equal to 4.5 minus 0 0.75 exponential t over tau. Keep in mind that uh, your tau is negative number. Just take a look quick. At t equal to zero, you have a, this one become one. You have a 4.5 minus 0 0.75. Let's give you a 3.75, which is VF, right? Incoming voltage from the source. That's true. At the infinity, um, since our negative number, you have a negative 0 0.75 exponential negative infinity. And that's give you Vs. That's the, the stable voltage. Okay. Uh, we will continue our chapter 3 uh, in uh, series 4. This one is series 3. Okay. Right.